I have my tarp here in the backyard pitched on my potato gear hammock stand and I'm going to seam seal it. And I'm going to be using this silicone seam sealer from Silnet. It comes with a little brush in the tube. Alright, so these are the directions here. I set up the tarp. I apply a thin film across the stitching and under the fabric folds and let it dry for three to six hours. So we're going to do the seam sealing along the ridge line at the top and then we're also going to seal the pullouts. I'm not going to bother sealing these tie outs because they're just at the bottom so I mean why bother. But we'll seal all of these. I have a dental irrigator syringe here that I got off of Amazon and I'm going to use this to apply the silicone right here along the seams and then I'll use the brush that comes in the packaging to smooth everything out. So I'm just doing this here in real time. The tube of Silnet has this foil seal on it that you just prick with the cap and then I'll squeeze some into this tube I don't know how much I'm going to need I don't want to overfill it so I'll just put some in and then I can always add more and I'll just put the plunger on and get that up into the tube. I'm working a nice fine bead here along the seam. And I'll just work it in with my brush. This is coming out kind of fine, so I'm just going to clip the end off this irrigator a little bit. Take the end off and hopefully get a little bit more coming out. Alright, we'll try that. Oh, that seems to be working pretty well. So I'm doing both sides of this flat filled seam combo with the French seam that is the instructions here. I'm doing the outside bit. I don't think I'm going to bother flipping it over and doing the underside unless I use the tarp and seem to think that I will need it. I don't think I'll need it though. I think just doing one side of the seam here will be enough. I've pitched this tarp not as taut as I can get it here. I really cranked it down. That way these seams are stretched open as much as possible. And then that seems to be working pretty good. I slept outside with this tarp for four nights this past long weekend and it rained some and I didn't get my tarp sealed before I went and it just was fine. I didn't get any water coming in but it didn't rain super hard. So it was enough but if I were out in a gale and were really coming down I probably would have been pretty miserable, so I want to get this sealed up as soon as I can. I'm just going to move on down the line here and finish the ridge line, and then when I come back, we'll do the pullouts. The ridge line is done, so I'm now going to do the seams here that I have on the attachment points for the ridge line, and I am show you I trimmed a little bit more off of my end of my irrigator here so that I get more of the silicone coming out with every squeeze. It was getting kind of hard on my hand to do that. 
and just take it down all the seams. I'm using this little brush just to work it in with the bristles here. I've got the end pieces and my ridge line sealed. And I'm, I'll zoom in real close so you can see. I have my silicone just kind of rubbed right in there, right along my stitches. It's not the straightest of lines, but this is going to dry clear, so as long as it keeps me dry, right? And it's got all the way down to the end. Now I've got my tie outs here and I've pulled those tight and I'm just going to put the seal around the edges here and then across all of my stitches. So we'll do that part next. I'm just going to go around the edges and push the sil sil net right in that flap right around where between my stitch and the end. And The nice thing about this dental irrigator is I can tuck it right up in there shoot it in those stitches and then I'll just follow all my seam lines with the silicone I don't have to do the seam lines where I attach the webbing just to the outer fabric because I've got the silicone inside Sil sil fabric inside is intact. I just need to do the ones where I sewed through the sil poly fabric. So that's what we'll do. I'm using those bristles on this brush to really kind of rub that stuff in the seams. And when I get to the edges here, I'm just going to smooth it out. Okay, so I've got four pullouts. I'm going to do this same step to each one and then I'm going to let it dry. So I have a wee bit of this sill net left in the syringe from doing the whole tarp. So I'm just going to return that amount into the tube. used about half the tube on the tarp so I've heard that if you just leave this out like this and you let it dry you can then peel the silicone right out of there and then that's a good way of cleaning this so that I could use it a second time so we'll try that I'm just gonna set it in a place where it's not going to get dirty and we'll come back in a few hours and see if I'm able to peel the silicone off but I am going to clean up my brush really good so that I can use that again. To clean the brush I'm going to use some mineral spirits that I got at the Home Depot or as we like to call it in our family the Home Despot. I'm just going to pry that open and I'll Pour just a little bit, you don't need a lot in this can. And I'll just swish this around in here pretty good. Get this brush clean. Hopefully this will get this clean and I won't have a disposable brush. I think I have enough of this sill net left over to use on my next tarp project. I'm planning to make a hex tarp for summer. I've got my winter tarp and then a summer tarp. So, yeah, It's a bright sunny morning. Let's take a look at our project. It's been outside drying all night. All the seams seem to be sealed with the silicone. 
This is the ridge line and the silicone. It's nice and smooth there. Here I have the pull outs on the other side. Everything looks pretty good. The seams are all sealed and everything looks nice and fairly tidy. I don't have goopy drips all over the place so I think using that dental irrigator syringe really helped. This is the brush that I tried cleaning yesterday. I still have a good bit of silicone stuck in these bristles, so I'm not sure that this is going to be usable a second time. It's now kind of like a paddle instead of a brush. But we'll see if I can't flick this a bit and work that open. Maybe it'll work. This is the irrigator. I left everything just dry inside, and now I'm wondering if that was a mistake. Maybe I can poke something down in there and clear that opening like a skewer. Silicone just seems to be rubbing off the outside with my thumb where it got gooped up. Let's see what happens. All right, that pushes in that way. All right, so I think I can clean this up a bit. When the air gets in there, I mean, this has been sitting outside overnight and it's still pretty goopy, but once the air gets in there, I think that'll dry up and then I'll just peel that stuff out. So we've saved our little syringe thing here for another tarp. This tarp, which has an 11 foot ridge line, has used about half my tubacil net. So I'm thinking one tube of this stuff is good for two tarps and that's probably pretty accurate. So I've used about half of that up. I read online that the silicone can touch one another and mess up the tarp. They can stick together or something. So to prevent that Cornstarch is recommended. So we're going to give cornstarch a try. I've got a box here, cornstarch, and I have a clean cosmetics brush because I use this for cooking and I don't want to get it dirty. So this baby's clean. I'm just going to get some on my brush. And they say sprinkle it on there. I'm tapping it on. I guess I'll whisk away the extra. I'm doing this outside and yeah, that feels... Not bad. It's not sticky anymore. Okay, I'm going to run cornstarch down the ridge line then. My tarp project is pretty much done. Well, we're all dusted up with cornstarch now. Everything looks pretty good. I'll be making some final decisions on the suspension for the tarp, and we'll cover that in the next video.